Coming up on Valley View News, California's Child Victims Act is strengthened to support survivors of childhood sexual abuse. Plus, a food bank helps families in need. And how two brothers found a way to uplift their community. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Liliana Ramirez. And I'm Yajaira Joaquin in the Digital Media Center. Moderna is a second promising vaccine that could be used in the United States. Early data shows that it's 94% effective against the coronavirus. That's higher than another two-dose vaccine made by Pfizer, which is 90% effective. Pfizer's and Moderna's vaccines use the same method to activate the body's immune system. Moderna's chief medical officer, Dr. Tal Sachs, says once more safety data is gathered, they plan to apply to the Food and Drug Administration for approval. Uh, by the end of this year, we said that in the United States, we expect to have 20 million doses. And so I think by the end of the year, hopefully, uh, we could uh, start to vaccinate people. Moderna's vaccine can be refrigerated for 30 days. Pfizer's dose must stay frozen. Vaccinations could start next month for those in high-risk groups. Wider distribution to the general public could start in the spring. Valley View News asked some Northridge residents their thoughts on a vaccine. It just seems a little bit too coincidental that they came out with something in such a short amount of time. I don't know if I'm comfortable taking it right right away when it comes out, but if it's if it's proven and it's and it's all good, then we should be taking it just so we can get back. It's a it's not as dangerous as not wearing a mask, you know, and not being uh, six feet distance from other people. Yeah, I do think people should be vaccinated just to be on the safer side of things. Uh, you always had uh, good uh, good good outcomes with uh, taking vaccines. The U.S. reached more than 166,000 new COVID-19 cases as of Sunday. That makes 11 million confirmed coronavirus cases. One million people were infected in only six days. Meanwhile, positive test rates are increasing nationwide. Dr. Anthony Fauci is the nation's head of infectious diseases. With a country as great and phenomenal as it is that has a flair of independence that they don't like to be told what to do. So there are a lot of things that are going to go into why we have such a high rate of infection and a high rate of death. Hospitalizations climbed to more than 69,000. That's the most since the pandemic started. Data shows Latinos are more than four times as likely to be hospitalized than Caucasians. African American hospitalizations are nearly as high as Latinos. In the meantime, many states are reinstating stay-at-home orders. Some LA County officials want to impose a curfew after a big increase in COVID-19 cases. A curfew is expected to slow the spread of the virus. Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas says a curfew could also keep businesses from closing down again. Governor Newsom said he'll slow down some planned reopenings of businesses. Statewide COVID-19 cases have doubled. Now officials will monitor counties for one week before any tier changes are made. Right now, 41 of 58 counties are in the most restrictive tier. Localities will have to modify plans or shutdowns could be imposed. California is the second state to pass 1 million cases. If a person was sexually abused as a Boy Scout, then Monday was the deadline for them to file a complaint. So far, more than 82,000 abuse complaints have been reported. That led to the Boy Scouts of America filing Chapter 11 bankruptcy earlier this year. The court gave victims until November 16th to file a claim. Attorney Gillian Dumas says some victims can still file a claim after the deadline only if they were abused after February of this year. So the person could still go forward potentially with a claim against the local council or likewise against a sponsoring organization. Victims range in age from 40 to 90 years old. The Boy Scouts of America apologized and urged victims to file a complaint. The Boy Scouts is more than 110 years old. California passed a law to extend the statute of limitations for reporting childhood sexual abuse. Valley View News reporter Jessica Vons explains what new legal actions can be taken. 
The Journal of Adolescent Health reported that 1 in 9 girls and 1 in 53 boys under the age of 18 experience sexual assault at the hands of an adult. California passed a law that would extend the statute of limitations for victims of childhood sexual assault. Any legislation that protects children in the broadest, widest sense is legislation we want to fight for. The California Child Victims Act took effect in January. A victim will now have until the age of 40 or five years from the discovery of psychological illness to file a civil suit against a party that knew about a risk of childhood sexual abuse. One important aspect of the law is the three-year look-back window. Last time California had a look-back window, it was only for one year. A lot of survivors, by the time they heard about the bill, the window had closed. The look-back window allows people to come forward and take legal action even if their statute of limitations has expired. So this hopefully will give more people a chance to um, learn about the bill and decide if they want to come forward. Studies show that the average age for victims to come forward is 52 years. If we understand that science, um, then the law has a, a duty and an obligation to respond to change the statute of limitations. California is one of nine other states to pass a similar legislation and extend the statute of limitations for victims of childhood sexual assault. Reporting from Northridge, California, I'm Jessica Vaughn. SpaceX partnered with NASA to launch four astronauts into space last weekend. This is the first time NASA sent a crew into space on a privately owned craft. It's also the first American manned mission in 10 years. NASA contracted with SpaceX in 2014 in order to stop relying on Russian rockets to get crews to the International Space Station. SpaceX astronaut Victor Glover made history by becoming the first African-American to join the space station. The crew quarantined for several weeks before the launch. SpaceX was started by Tesla billionaire Elon Musk. Musk didn't attend the launch because he had a mild case of COVID-19. The governors of California, Oregon, and Washington issued a coronavirus travel advisory last week. They want people to self-quarantine and not travel for 14 days. No strict enforcement rules have been set down. California's coronavirus rate is among the nation's highest. Governor Newsom says the virus isn't slowing down, even though the state has one of the lowest cases per 100,000 residents. So far, 11 counties moved to more restrictive COVID tiers. In Southern California, only San Diego County changed. The West Coast Travel Advisory comes just before the busiest travel season in the U.S. With Thanksgiving approaching, L.A. County is advising to stay safe from gathering. Los Angeles Major Eric Garcetti says the safest way to celebrate Thanksgiving this year is to celebrate with people in your household. Cancel those vacation plans right now. Do not sneak in other households for Thanksgiving. Get a chicken instead of a turkey or a small turkey. Coronavirus cases around the country continue to rise as Thanksgiving approaches. A recent survey from Ohio State University found 40% of U.S. residents plan to gather in groups of 10 or more this holiday season, while a majority of 79% said they would only gather with people they live with. Here's how some people feel about celebrating Thanksgiving this year. I have the immediates, but yeah, like my mother, she, she definitely will be at my house and uh, my aunts, things of that sort, but yeah, we'll be masked up. I definitely don't think it's a good decision, but I personally think we, my family's gonna do it, you know? So it's just something like, I feel like we've been depriving ourselves from our family, you know, and then it still keeps going. You know, it's, it's tough to just restrict everyone from a, a national, holiday. Um, it's also the beginning pretty much of Christmas time. The Los Angeles Food Bank hosted a food drive through in Castaic. Reporter Emily Burbaker explains how hundreds of families were helped. The Los Angeles Food Bank hosts hundreds of food drive throughs The drive throughs give multiple meals to anyone who shows up. Second time volunteer John Richards says he's giving back to the Castaic community. It's just a tough spot right now with everything going on in our country and with COVID and to see the smiles on their face is, is fantastic. Many families are unemployed due to the coronavirus pandemic. They don't know what the future holds. 
The food distribution helps people like Michaela Gonzalez provide for her family. Trying to make sure we have, because we don't know what's kind of happening with everything. Gives a little bit of peace of mind. One, two, also for the holidays, you know, don't know what's going to happen. People arrived as early as 7 a.m. to get food. The line snaked for miles. Fruit and meat are handed out. Catherine Barnes says she appreciates the help. It'll feed a whole family for a month. We're, we're, we'll be good with all the extras we get from here. Have a blessed day. This is the second food drive in Castaic since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. Food drives like these provide comfort for families in need. Reporting for Valley View News, I'm Emily Brubaker. The Los Angeles Unified School District and the union representing principals and administrators reached an agreement on schools reopening protocols. Superintendent Austin Buettner says the guidelines are for hybrid classes, which are a combination of online and in-person. Buettner didn't say when students can start in-person classes again. However, when they do start, students must be tested for COVID-19, wear a mask, and keep a social distance. The Board of Education must approve the agreement before the plan can start. Los Angeles is seeing weather in the 70s and 80s. Still in the ski season, it's beginning at the Snow Valley Mountain Resort. Man-made snow covers slopes at the Running Springs Resort. Guests must wear face coverings and keep social distance. People can only ride lifts together if they arrive together. And only cashless transactions will be accepted. Lift tickets are being sold online. Any remaining tickets can be bought at ticket windows. The resort will also accept vouchers and all tickets from the 2019-2020 season. With all the negativity surrounding the coronavirus pandemic, two Monrovia teens found a way to spread joy. Valley V News reporter Ryan Ketchum talked with them to see how they mix spray painting with the love for LA sports. Spray painting the lawns of strangers is unconventional work, but Monrovia teen Zachary Menlove and his younger brother Joshua turned it into a thriving COVID-19 business called LA Lawn Art. Yeah, we get there, we ask what logos they want, we put it on their lawn, straighten it up, and then spray it, and then we take it off, fill it in, and they just love it. The boys make their wooden stencil logos by hand. The majority of the orders are for LA sports teams, but they'll make stencils for any team. They are even willing to do stencils not associated with sports. I like doing sports a lot just because it's like, helping people wrap their teams and stuff. But I, yeah, I will do Christmas and just other holidays. The brothers say they saved their money and donated to charitable organizations. In October, they donated to breast cancer research. Their father, Ryan Menlove, says he's proud to see them give so willingly. If they can learn to be giving and give back, uh, there's nothing more I could want for my boys to work hard and learn to be giving. Zachary says the best part of the business has been seeing their customers' reactions. I am beyond excited, to be honest. I don't want it to go away. I'm going to tell my gardener, don't touch my lawn for a while. And, and when it does, I probably will have them out here again. Despite the negativity surrounding the coronavirus pandemic, the Men Love Brothers are taking this opportunity to spread the love of LA sports to everyone. Reporting from Covina for Valley View News, I'm Ryan Ketchum. After the break, Valley View News revisits some of our favorite stories, including a dance teacher who inspires senior citizens to stay active, and a wrestler who steps into the ring representing the LGBTQ community. You made her college years possible, opening that education savings account when she was little, spearheading campus tours, and deciphering financial aid. If you can ace planning for college, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. Typhoon Van Co made landfall in Vietnam earlier this week. The storm killed 67 people in the Philippines. Winds hit speed up to 93 miles per hour, but slowed once hitting land. Vietnam is prone to destructive storms. 
Thamco is the 13th storm there this year. 160 people have died by storms in the country since October. The provinces planned on evacuating nearly half a million people by the end of the last week. The storm has already caused $35 million in damages, including more than 25,000 homes. Mexico reached 1 million coronavirus cases and about 100,000 confirmed deaths. In response, Mexico City is under a strict lockdown. Bars are fully closed. Restaurants and gyms will close early as well. Mexico's President Andres Manuel López Obrador has been criticized for rarely wearing a mask. Since the start of the pandemic, Mexico has tested only 2.5 million people. Low testing made it difficult to use trace contacts, which would have helped with stopping the spread. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is self-isolating after coming in contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19. Johnson spent about 35 minutes with Member of Parliament Lee Anderson on Thursday. And actually, it doesn't matter that I've had the disease and I'm bursting with antibodies. We've got to interrupt the spread of the disease. Johnson is set back in his duties, but he's still trying to reset his government after factional fighting in Parliament. In the spring, he spent three nights in intensive care after contracting the coronavirus. At the time, he thanked healthcare workers for saving his life. Peru's Congress voted Francisco Sagasti in as their new president. He's the third president the country's had in a week. The vote came after the two previous presidents left office. President Martin Vizcarra was impeached and removed from office earlier this month for alleged bribes he took while serving as a regional governor. Those allegations are still under investigation. As head of Congress, Manuel Merino was next in line. He resigned after police killed two protesters in a pro-democracy rally. Sagasti's task as the new president will be to heal the nation after a week of political crisis and to control the country's high COVID-19 mortality rates. Valley View News revisits the story of a teacher in Canoga Park who inspires senior citizens to stay active through dance. Here's our reporter, Ashley LaRue. One, two, three, four. Sylvia Davis has been teaching at Canoga Park Senior Citizen Center for eight years. She says her students come for fun, exercise, memory and socializing. It gives them a variety of dances to do and not only does it just exercise, they always say oh, I come for the exercise, but they really come for more. It's just a social thing. I have to, sometimes I feel like I need a whistle because they're all talking, hey we have a class here, you paid for a class here. <laughs> The dancers average in age from 60 to 80. Dancer Phyllis Steinbrenner is the veteran of the group. She's 91 years old. They learn a variety of dances, including line dancing. But one dancer says they need recognition. Renee Arts says she's disappointed that her doctor and other doctors don't recommend line dancing as an activity. To me, they should have line dancing because line dancing makes you uh, physically active. You have to have balance and you have to have a memory, even though the teacher might call the steps, you still have to remember what the various steps are. Like if they say a grapevine, you have to know what a grapevine is. The class runs for two hours, one to three, but obviously there's some breaks in between. You're never too old to get on your feet. The Senior Citizen Line Dance meets here every Wednesday and Thursday. In Canoga Park with Valley View News, I'm Ashley LaRue. Dustin Johnson won the Masters Tournament with the lowest score in history. He had a 20 under par. Johnson scored two strokes better than former Masters winner Tiger Woods. He says he started a little rough, but knew he had to end well in order to win. You know, especially from really seven in, into the clubhouse, I played really, really solid. Johnson finished with a 20 under 268. He closed with a four under 68. Hall of Fame Dodgers manager Tommy Lasorda is hospitalized in Orange County with heart issues. Lasorda is sedated and on a ventilator. Lasorda had a heart attack in 1996 and again in 2012. He needed a stent to repair a blocked artery. After the second attack, he said doctors confirmed he bled Dodger blue. Three weeks ago, Lasorda watched the Dodgers win the World Series for the first time since his victory with the team in 1988. 
During his time as manager, he led them to a two World Series championships, four National League pennants and eight division titles. The 2020 NBA champion Lakers aren't wasting time during this short offseason. General Manager Rob Palinka is working on a trade that would send Danny Green and the number 28 pick in Wednesday's NBA draft to the Oklahoma City Thunder for Dennis Schroeder. The trade market officially opened on Monday and a virtual draft was held Wednesday. Players like Contavious Caldwell Pope and Dwight Howard are still on the table to be re-signed. The International Olympic Committee is working on a new safety measures for next year's Summer Olympics. The 2020 Summer Olympics were postponed because of COVID-19. Chief of International Olympic Committee Thomas Bach hopes all attendees and athletes will be vaccinated. He's confident the Olympics will occur next summer. This comes after the news of two successful vaccines candidates. Without a vaccine, the Olympics won't happen next year. If canceled, it will be the fourth time to happen in history. Before social distancing orders were placed, Valley View News reporter Mario Saucedo spoke with a wrestler who stepped out in the ring to represent the LGBTQ community. Kenny Marquez is the first openly gay SoCal Rookie of the Year. Marquez says he wants to be a role model that people in the LGBTQ community can relate to. When I was younger, I wasn't hearing that. You know, I felt a lot of pride hearing things like the first Latino this, the first Latino that, but I knew that there was something more to me that made me different. Marquez grew up in a Catholic household. He says growing up, he feared that his older brother would reject them because he was gay. It bothered him when I would do certain mannerisms or say certain things that may have implied at the time that I could have been gay. And he would make certain comments like, if you came out, then I would do this, or if you came out, then I would hurt you. Despite this, Marquez has found acceptance from both his family and friends. His best friend, Daniel Robinall, says his peers at the Santino Bros Wrestling Academy welcomed him with open arms. Uh, he can just tell me anything, say anything. Like, there's times where he, he looks at guys and he's like, oh, that guy's hot, and he tells me. And I don't really mind because it's like, you know, he likes guys, so there's nothing bad about that. Marquez says this isn't his last first. He says he wants to be pro wrestling's first openly gay world champion. From Los Angeles, I'm Mario Saucedo. When we come back, people gather to enjoy bolero music before the pandemic. Also, a street vendor supports her family by selling tamales at 6 in the morning. Stay with us. Actress Demi Lovato hosted East People Choice Awards from the Barker Hunger in Santa Monica. Fan votes determined the winners and Lovato assured them that the popular vote is different from the presidential election. Oh, and um, don't worry, we made sure to count everyone in Pennsylvania's vote first. Tracy Ellis Ross, Ellen DeGeneres and Tyler Perry shared positive messages while receiving their award. Tiffany Haddish took home the first award of the night for female movie star. Other winners include Mandy Moore, Blake Shelton, Doja Cat and BTS. With COVID-19 cases rising and theaters shutting down, the box office numbers are underperforming. Blumhouse and Universal's Freaky took the top spot last weekend, bringing in $3.7 million. The movie is a horror take on Freaky Friday. Vince Vaughn stars as a serial killer who switches bodies with a teenage girl. Let Him Go plays second place with $1.8 million. The War with Grandpa came in third with $1.3 million. Many major Hollywood studios say they are sitting out the fall season because of the pandemic. Before the pandemic, many people gathered in Los Angeles to enjoy bolero music. Valley View News reporter Byron Gonzalez shares how women are energizing bolero music. Boleros de Noche is a celebration of classic Mexican music and women. Margarita Luna says bolero music is making a transformation into the future. We have to accept that transformation of the bolero, but the essence will be there. 
Bolero music originated in Cuba, it made its way to Mexico in the 40s, and now, in the 21st century, it has reached LA. Traditionally, bolero bands are fronted by men, but Rocio Libertad Mendoza says women now fit into the bands naturally. Anytime there was a female voice that was, you know, inserted into a, a trio romantico, it, I think it, people really liked it. Currently, there's only a few women singing boleros. Sumac Alvarado says the music genre is ready to find more women. I think they're there, they exist. We just need to be a little bit more intentional about reaching out to them and bringing them and uplifting their voices and their presence. Bolero music holds a passionate place in the hearts of many people in Los Angeles. And when women get involved with this type of music, that passion grows stronger. I'm Byron Gonzalez in Los Angeles for Valley View News. Guitar Center is filing for bankruptcy. The company reached an agreement with its creditors to restructure its debt. They could file a Chapter 11 bankruptcy and would give the company a break on its debt and keep operating while management works on a turnaround. Guitar Center is the largest musical instrument retailer in the U.S. During the pandemic, Guitar Center began offering repairs and music lessons. The lessons have continued online via video conferencing. New studies show fish oil does not help with heart health. The American Heart Association scientific session discussed the new studies and the results of fish oil. The first study found that taking fish oil and vitamin D doesn't help with atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a serious heart rhythm disturbance that can lead to a stroke, heart failure and even death. The second study found fish oils does not reduce cardiovascular risks. Now let's revisit a story done by Avril Preciado on Maria Santillan, who supports her family by rising early to sell her special brand of tamales. At 6 in the morning, Maria Santillan walks through her neighborhood with a cart full of warm tamales. As people stop by to buy her fresh product. For years, she's dedicated her life selling tamales to help support her family. She says that although her work is not easy, she does it to give her two sons a better life. I was afraid to go out since people would say I was around. That's why I didn't work in a factory because they asked for legal documents. But I thought, how was I going to leave my son without school or anything? So I lost that fear. With Santillan's hard work and strength, her son Victor Riveles is now a student attending college in Missouri. He is one of the many students that has benefited from DACA. He said in a Skype interview that his mother is his driving force to persevere. You know, she's my hero. Mm -hmm. She is my hero. And by the fact, obviously, uh, you know, she, she's, she raised us as, as a single mother. And all the sacrifices she's made, that's inspiring to me. Santian says she will continue to work hard and hopes to have enough strength to watch her kids succeed. People find many ways to work, like selling food and goods in order to help support their families. In Los Angeles, Abri Preciado, Valley View News. That's all for us at Valley View News. I'm Yahira Joaquin. And I'm Liliana Ramirez. For stories any time of the day, go to our website sundial.csun.edu. Thanks for watching.